All right, hello everyone. My name is Luke Hopkins, and welcome back to Perspective Points, an outlet for both me and you to share experiences and have positive and productive conversations about incorporating mindfulness into one's life. I am so happy to be doing this, to be talking to camera. It, it, it's really cool, and I just want to take a second to start off and just say thank you guys so much. Perspective Points is over a year old now, which is wild. We've accumulated over a thousand total followers, 25,000 total plays, over a hundred five star ratings on Spotify. It means a lot. It's really damn cool, and I could not be more grateful. So, big shout out to everyone to start off the episode. But today's episode, I'm actually, it's a good one, and it's probably overdue considering that I ran the marathon almost a month ago now. But I'm going to be recapping the Huntington Surf City Marathon, the results of that, as well as just kind of reflecting on all three of the marathons that I've ran, because I've ran a marathon since every year since my sophomore year of college. I'm a senior now, so three marathons in three years. Um, and I feel like I've, there's some big takeaway lessons in all of that. And I'm pretty excited to for this episode, because like sometimes with uh, perspective points, I'll like have a lot of notes down, and I'll try and make sure that I'm hitting all my notes. This is just recap. This is just me talking about my experience running some marathons. So it's going to be a pretty damn good time. Um, but like always, before we get into anything, we have the quote of the day. And that comes from Alison McCall, and that is, Talent might make you good, but it's your attitude and work ethic that will make you great. And if you guys know me, you know I love that juxtaposition of good versus great. And it, it means everything to me. And I love it because in applied or applying it to like running, like, I was not a runner. I never was a runner growing up, um, and I'll get into that, but, like, the idea of doing these, like, long distance, running for over an hour, like, I was just like, hell no, like, that'll never be me. I'm always going to be a sprinter. I'm always going to be really fast. Like, that's that's all I really ever cared about. I think that's, like, the athlete side of me. Don't get me wrong. I still do love that, but... I've really found my love with distance running because I've shown up every day and I flipped my mindset. It was no longer, I have to do these long runs. I have to take my zone two miles dreadingly slow in order to build my aerobic base. It's, I get to, I have the opportunity to, I can move my body, I can run this distance. I get to expand my aerobic fitness because I want to do it. And like that type of mindset switch is all about attitude because what happens when you have a positive attitude, when you're motivated about something, your work ethic is going to increase. They're directly proportional because you got to think about it. When you're in a rut, when you're struggling with your workout, when you're struggling to find motivation, it's not that like, oh, your attitude is like, yeah, I'm super happy. I just don't want to like work out, you know, it, it's, it's, they go hand in hand. So I think that's a really important thing to always vitalize that self-control aspect and self-awareness as to where you stand emotionally in regards to what you're trying to accomplish and ensure that, hey, like, if I really do want to get better at something, I'm going to have to show up every day. It's going to be hard, but I get to do that. So yeah, that was really all the main points that I wanted to talk about um, with that quote. And now um, let's get into the topic. Let's talk about running. I'm going to share my whole running experience, how I got to the 302 mark for marathoning with marathoning. Yeah, why not? Uh, we're going to rock with that. But um, yeah, pre-distance running background. So if you do not know, I played football and rugby in high school. Those are my two main sports. Uh, but I actually did a semester of track in my freshman year. I hadn't hit puberty yet, so I think I was still like 5'2", 120, 130 pounds. Uh, my event was the 400. I think I ran a sub one minute one time, and I almost threw up. I was gassed, and I'm like, yep, I, I tapped out, and I switched over to rugby because it was the, the same season, so it was in the spring. Um, I, that, that was not for me. They, but it, it really was not. I would try and do um, like these runs around my neighborhood with like a weighted vest. And I never just like went out and was just like, yeah, I'm going to go for a run. I would throw on like a 20 pound weighted vest that literally weighs, you know, a sixth of my body weight at that point. And I was like, no wonder I hated distance running. Like I made it miserable for myself. Um, but every single thing I did cardio wise was speed and agility, sprints, explosive, plyometrics, jumping. Um, that was like the only thing that I really rocked with until my freshman year of college and I came out to USC and there was COVID. So all the gyms were closed and I was just like, okay, how can I get a workout in? Well, the campus is kind of gated, you know, it's a private community or it's a private college gated community or not gated community, but the campus is gated. Um, 
And it's about a two mile loop around the campus. And I remember the first time I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go for a, you know, a two mile loop run uh, around the campus. I literally had to stop and walk like 1.3 miles in because I, I just didn't know how to pace myself. And I went out sprinting uh, and I really didn't enjoy it. But by the end of the semester, I kept doing that two mile loop and I started to kind of hit my groove. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I could start doing a 5K every day. And that summer, summer 2021, I was really like three miles was the base mark and I was going three miles. But the thing was like, I was going three miles. My first mile would be like a 712. My second mile would be eight minutes and my last mile would be like 840. Like I had no clue what the hell negative splits were, what pacing was. I always went out way too hot. I uh, still do struggle with that a little bit. I think I started all my runs pretty hot, but that's besides the point. Um, and it wasn't until I started doing some kind of research and came across this guy, Nick Bear, and he kind of was doing this whole like long distance running thing while I'm still lifting every day. I was like, huh, like I'll give it a try. And like just so happened to be like the week I was reading, or I started reading his book, uh, my buddy Kyle reached out and he's like, yo, do you want to run a half marathon with me? Because Kyle had kind of gotten into running a little bit earlier. Um, he's a big reason why I do do marathons and kind of the distance running now. So Kyle, thank you. I was like, hell yeah, man. Like I'm going to push myself. I'm going to show up and run this half marathon. So I met him. It was about May 13th. No, that's way. I was still in college. Um, maybe in June, I want to say. June of 2021, I ran my first half marathon and I hadn't ran more than over three miles, maybe four miles, and it sucked. It was the worst experience of my life. My feet calloused, the calloused ripped open, and then they reformed. Like, that's how bad my blisters were. And I couldn't walk for two weeks after. I was, like, in such horrible pain. Um, I think I overate entirely, too, because I thought I had burned significantly more calories than I did. Like, my perception of running was so skewed at the beginning. I'm like, oh, yeah, I ran three miles. I probably burned, like... 500 600 cal it's like no like that's not really how it works at all um but i remember my mom was just like you're probably not gonna do that again huh and i was like ah, you're wrong uh so i ended up running another half marathon on the 4th of july much better this time it was no stopping uh we made it all the way through um but i think my time was like 202 you know i and i, I think that's gonna round me a nine minute pace maybe a little bit over um and still, like, I had no intra running fuel. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know electrolytes were a thing at the time. Uh, I was really, like, my first year, or not first year, but, like, first six months of, like, my running career so far, uh, I was in the dark. And I, I just, I think it's, like, the athlete in me where I'm just like, I'll figure it out myself. I'll tough it out and muscle it through. You can't tough out running for long periods of time because your body needs nutrition. And that's like one thing that's been really cool is I've been able to integrate in my knowledge of my almost nutrition minor at USC. I say that because I had to drop it because they didn't offer the last class I needed in my last semester. That's for a different time. Um, and my knowledge as a certified nutrition coach, like using both of those um, to kind of pr improve my performance and like understand all right, and even like my, my understanding like biology, like I took human bio and it's just like, you understand that, all right, you need sodium to withhold the water and to ensure that your muscles are getting enough blood flow so that you don't cramp up. Like, like being able to integrate that on, I just went on a tangent, my bad about that. But yeah, uh, two half marathons uh, that summer 2021, and then it led into my sophomore year of college. And in the fall, I had gotten into a habit, which I now recommend to anyone that I work with or whenever ever anyone asked me like how to get into running, uh, I came across the concept of timed running. So what that is, is instead of running for a specific mileage, you run for a specific time and you kind of scale back and forth. So you'll go up five minutes back to your base time, up 10 minutes back to your base time. And every time you go back to your base time, you try and run just a little bit farther than the previous time you're at that time. So 20, 25, 20, 30, 20, 40, you know, kind of like that. And you want to just keep progressing. Um, it was a good concept. And I really was getting into good groove. I was running like four or five times a day. And in that second semester, in the start of 2022, I decided to sign up for the LA Marathon. And this is what I want to say is big lesson number one of endurance running. And that is accept that you are a beginner. Because obviously I had some other stuff going on in my life at the time. I was fraternity president. Um, I was in my toughest semester at that point for college classes and I was just like 
yeah, you know, I'm gonna run a marathon. Why not? Why not add on to it? But my training was all out of whack. I would just wake up one day and be like, yep, today sounds like a good day to run a half marathon. And then like the next week I'd try and run 20 miles. I think I failed hitting the 20 mile marker like six weeks in a row. And I'm like, oh my God, like I can't even get to the 20. I gotta run 26. Um, it was definitely, definitely not the right way. I didn't understand, like I said, the whole training, nutrition aspect of things yet. Um, but I went out and I ran it and it was probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my entire life physically. Um, let's say there was technical difficulties at mile 2022 and that's all, or 22. Um, and that's all I'm going to leave it at. But yeah, I finished the race and my time was a 3:43, so an 8:28 pace, and it was a huge learning experience to every single bit of me as an athlete and just understanding that hey, when you're training in these different disciplines, like you really have to accept the fact that you do not know anything and that you it is totally okay. It is almost like encouraged to turn to a professional, someone who has experience, a coach, and just be like, hey, like, I want to learn, I want to improve on this, like, how can I do it? Because, like, even the best athletes of all time, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, like, I, I just named three basketball players, you know, Tiger Woods, and I, like, whatever, they all have coaches, they all have mentors, they all have people that guide them, so understanding that you need a guide too, like, that's huge, and that was something that I neglected massively, so I encourage you, if you're trying to get into running, or powerlifting, or bodybuilding, or any aspect in which, like, you're not the most well-versed right now, get a coach, learn from a structured training program, don't think that you can run 20 miles on three hours of sleep. It's not going to work out for you. Um, but yeah, the first marathon, a major learning experience, and it was a good time. Uh, junior year rolled around. I ran all throughout that summer. Um, I think I ran like another half marathon towards the end of that summer. Now we're in fall of 2022. Junior year, I realized that I was closing in on a thousand miles on the year. This was in probably November, and I decided, I'm like, oh, like, I'll queue it up and like, I'll run a full marathon for shits and gigs around my neighborhood here in USC uh, to hit like the thousand mile marker. So there's actually a video on my Instagram if you scroll all the way down. I repost it every now and then. Um, but it's like me like and I'm doing like the mile updates while I was just running laps around USC. It was wild. And I ran that marathon like well over four hours. So it's like a shits and gigs marathon. I don't count that as a marathon because I was just like, oh, whatever. Um, but then I, I really... Um, I took a step back from running for the rest of that year, took a pretty chill and I got really into, this was like the start of me posting content is that end of December, early January for, uh, 2023, uh, now January, 2023. And I got really into posting content and I started running a lot more. I started following BPN a lot more and just understanding that it's not a matter of just going out and running as hard as you can every single day. Like you're not going to get better that way that there's like actually like a method to the madness and I was offered the opportunity to run the BPN Go One More Marathon in April of 2023. I think I was like an eight week turnaround when I found out I was invited. So I really only had like an eight week marathon prep. And this is when I started to really understand that one, there's different types of runs in marathon training. Two, that like you really do need to prioritize like turning to individuals that know more than you. So I worked with a lot of guys, Jack Driscoll, Matt Johnson, um, a lot of other runners just in the kind of BPN community who guided me and really offered a lot of insights on what I should be doing, how I should be structuring my training. Super encouraging, such a great group, and it really kind of motivated me. Um, I was fired up. I run it, my training was feeling good, and I, I felt like I was ready in less or eight weeks' time to just like go out there and rip it. And I had the goal of a 315 in mind. That's what I want. I wanted to go 343 to 315. Pretty big jump. Um, and the lesson here, big lesson number two with the second marathon, is that accept that things will go as they are intended, not as they are planned. So, to give you insight into how this race went, I actually made a podcast episode the week after this race and kind of recapped it a little bit. Um, I had to stop multiple times. We'll call them technical difficulties again. Um, and by mile 24, I entirely cramped up. I hadn't cramped once in all of my training. I hadn't had to stop to use the bathroom once in all my training, yet it happened during the biggest run, you know, during the biggest moment. And I was so frustrated because I was just like, dude, what the hell? I'd been training so hard. I felt like I deserved a better race than I had. Um, I still ran a 317.10, which came out to a 732 pace. And I was still happy because that's a 25 minute PR, but I didn't feel fulfilled. 
And that was something that looking back on, like I wish I was more happy and grateful in the moment to have had the experience to run that race because I was just so focused on the fact that I was two minutes off my goal and not the fact that, you know, I pushed through and even with all the difficulty and, you know, adversity that I had, in eight weeks time, I, I dropped 25 minutes on my marathon and ran a 317. That's like a pretty damn good time if you ask me. Um, but yeah, I think a big aspect here is like we kind of talked about the self-control aspect of emotions during races. It's so easy to get in your head when you're like, am I hitting paces? Am I like, is my heart rate good? Is my breathing good? Is my stride good? That like you really just have to like take a deep breath and just be like, dude, like I have the opportunity to run this right now. I'm going to have a damn good time with it. Um, and yeah, that's something that I'm going to recommend to every runner always is that like when that race day finally does come up, like don't take it so seriously to the point that like you can't enjoy it. You know, like you signed up to do this. Like you want to be able to look back on this memory on this race and be like, holy hell, that was a damn good time in my life. I liked when I was interacting with the crowd, the other runners, you know, that feeling crossed the finish line after it. Like if you really neglect all that and you're like, yep, like I'm just here to run. That's it. Like it takes away the fun and you're not going to be able to enjoy running. So that is big thing is accept that things will always go as they're intended, not as they're planned. Because looking back, if that race had gone exactly as it was planned, like who knows where we could have been or my kind of outlook on everything. So looking back now, and I'm going to talk about this, but going into the Surf City Marathon, like I, I that was the best run of my life. And I was so joyful, so happy. Um, I'm ready to get into that. But yeah. So after that marathon in April of 2023, I took like a pretty big break from running. Um, I had to do summer shredding and then a powerlifting competition. And then again, I had the OCB show where I became a natural pro bodybuilder. So I really didn't run distance wise. Like I was doing like 20 minute jogs at zone two. And like that's all we were doing. But in, after that, after my OCB show, I got a little bit sick and I took two weeks off entirely from working out and then it was the rebuild so beginning of October I like went humbled myself entirely fully embraced the whole zone two slow running I was running like 10 minute miles my heart rate was still like 150 and I was so angry but I was just like fuck it we're going slow um and I had signed up for the surf city marathon in February 2024 so that gave me about four months of solid prep and you know like I said I'd learned I worked directly with Matt Johnson my coach he had me running you know, in a very structured way. It understood, it was like systematic. And me as like a neuroscience major, I've always been like a math and science guy. It was cool because I understood like why we were progressing at the rate that we did. I could see the progress and I could track it. And like that was something that was really cool to me. Uh, a little bit of a nerd out, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, that really leads me to um, like the overall lesson for this one, lesson number three, which is just like, be grateful you can do hard things. Cause like, this prep, as enjoyable as it was, as much as it did make me like a better runner, like it was a mental challenge. I was definitely going through it a little bit. And a lot of my runs, like if you check like the Garmin or Strava, like I was doing like my 10 mile runs at 10 p.m. So like I was finishing up like 11.30 uh, just because like I would sit around all day and be like, oh, like, I really don't want to run. I really don't want to run. I didn't have that mindset where I was just like, I get to do this. And it was like definitely very challenging. Um, but then like, as we started the race, as we were kind of working, I had three back to back to back 20 mile weeks where I would then just like get in my car and go drive to go to New York City with my girlfriend or just kind of have a time after. The prep was great. It was very hard, um, but it was great. It honestly could have gone better. That's the beauty of it, but I enjoyed it very much. And the goal was to go sub three in the marathon. So it's 317 to, you know, 259. And we ran a 302.10, which I think came out to 657 pace. I want to say, and it was the best run of my life. Like, you know, all my training runs and all my training long runs, I never was able to hold that pace for that period of time. Um, I always failed in the intervals and I came out and I ran sub seven miles for 26.2 miles. And that's something that I cannot be happier about. And it was a really cool experience too, because I actually ran the race with two of my good friends and I was able to coach them. I was walking them through the carb loading, the intra running, how they structure their taper, that when they should do their long runs. It was like a really cool moment because, like, as a coach myself, like the guys I work with, it's nothing is more fulfilling than like watching them succeed. Like, it's cool when I do cool things, but to watch someone else do it and to have an effect on them, like, it's definitely really cool. Um, but yeah, just be grateful that you can do hard things.
and be grateful that like when you sign up for a marathon, when you're going through it, when you're having these tough challenges throughout the prep, when you feel like it's never going to end. And when the race day does come around, like just remind yourself, like you signed up for this and like really just embrace it all, take it all in and just like have a time with it. Um, and that leads me to where we're at right now and kind of like the new perspective I like to say that I have on running which is that not everything has to be a personal best. Um, and I know that sounds kind of weird. It's like, wait, why would you want to get worse? And it's not about that, but like just being able to sign up for a race and enjoy it, you know, uh, not have to make sure that at next time I run a marathon, whatever that may be, that like I'm pushing as hard as I can because if I sign up for a marathon just to run it with my friends, like, yeah, I'm going to have a great time. But like, obviously as an athlete, there will come a time down the road um, where we do sign up for another marathon and then we go sub three and we go sub 250 and we go sub two. Like, you know, that's me as a human being, like we're always going to progress. But like, for example, I signed up for the LA marathon. I'm just running the half marathon with some of my buddies that are coming up to LA. Like that's something I'm not going to treat that like a PR moment where I'm like, Oh my God, I have to run this half marathon as fast as I can. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to brace the, the LA marathon spirits, all the people cheering and I'm going to have a great time with my friends. And I got something really cool that any person can do is you can sign up for a race pretty much whenever and just have a time. So I can do that. Um, and then lastly, I think it's just that some things can be about just enjoying the moments and being present. I wrote that point down. I feel like I probably had a lot of thought behind it when I wrote this down because I ran out like some points. Um, but yeah, I mean, just be present when you're running on your long runs. It's so easy to be like, I can't wait for this run to be over. I'm tracking down how many miles I have left till we're done. Um, but just like, Sometimes you just got to like ground yourself and be like, dude, like we cut, I kind of talked at the beginning of the episode. I get to do this. I have the opportunity to do this. My body can allow me to do this. Those are all just like such great things that you should just like remind yourself whenever you're going for a good run. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all that I got. I, I feel like a rapid fire. I just went through the past four years of my life right there, but Hey man, why not? Um, but yeah, I got, like I said, some closing points. I got a few races coming up. Uh, we had a half marathon as well as a potential ultra marathon. Um, it's a 50 miler. I'm pacing my buddy, Matt Johnson, my coach, my guy, um, pacing him. He's run the hundred miles. So I was just like, oh yeah, I'll help him out for the first 50. Why not? Cause you know, I just got that dog in me. That's it at the end of the day. Um, and the last closing point I want to say is just a massive thank you to you all. It has been so enjoyable getting back in the groove of like enjoying making content and like sitting down and like writing out this script and like actually just like talking like it's 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 been an absolute pleasure and i could not be happier with how this kind of transition back into everything's going but yeah thank you guys so much for everything for listening to this episode of perspective points whether you're listening on spotify apple Podcasts, or you're watching the video of it on youtube why not um but yeah that's gonna do it for today's episode once again i want to thank you all very much for watching listening whatever it is um and i will see you guys next time